Uh, we've been talking about artificial intelligence for as long as I've lived. I'm Eva AI, your new digital girlfriend. Audio recordings of conversations that haven't ever happened, sowing seeds of mistrust. Of the mayor was able to speak a variety of languages, including Mandarin, Cantonese, and Spanish, using deepfake tech. It will lead to increasing distrust in media or politicians. The most fundamental point is to make sure we keep the human in the loop. So, Simon, uh, we've been talking about artificial intelligence for as long as I've, almost as long as I've lived. And now, literally overnight, it's arrived. And lo and behold, every single tech company on the planet claims they've got AI, AI which is clearly not true. So is this the tech industry doing what they've always done, you know, which is to give us something else to spend our money on? Or has something terribly fundamental actually just happened? So the UK government um, is talking about maybe in 10 years' time, two-thirds of the civil service uh, will be replaced by AI. IBM are shedding 8,000 jobs to be replaced with AI. Do they know what it's going to do? Probably not. So regardless of whether any of that is real, you know, is, is that true or not, something is happening and we have to respond. Yeah. So I guess my big question there is, are these organizations, these institutions responding to a typical sort of catastrophic fear mongering in the industry or the media, which will end up a bit like the fear we had on the year, you know, year 2000? Uh, or, you know, is this real? Is this actually going to have that much of a dramatic effect on our lives and our, our work? In the last 12 months, AI has become much more immediate and obvious to a whole swathe of people for whom it meant nothing before. Uh, what's called the, the large language models, generative AI, all of a sudden it feels like anyone can use AI, they can pick it up, and it's almost visceral. You can have a conversation, it understands you. It can create things for you, it can make things. So that's pretty exciting. Um, mm. It feels like we're into an era that is completely different to what mm. we've seen before mm. with AI. And that is having a, a, a real effect on what companies feel they should be doing, um, not necessarily matching up with what is possible, but the pressure is there and that yeah. pressure is real. Yeah. Whatever the trigger and how real it is, and you're, I think you're saying, Simon, it is real, Companies have to deal with it. People have to deal with it because it seems to me like it's it's becoming ubiquitous and therefore it is going to affect us. And therefore, in a way, all of us need to be equipped to have a response, which is, you know, which is which is dramatic. I can't think of you know, many other things which have sort of got hold of everybody and said, you need to wake up and listen. Yeah. If you come across a, a, a capability which um, apparently can write text better than you can, then you start thinking, well, where in my business could I not apply this? Mm. Um, you can uh, get, a, get a machine to summarize things for you. You can get it to write to customers, uh, create newsletters, create podcasts and blogs. Um, the, the, the possibilities seem endless. And so it feels like you're going to have to think about all, all the different aspects of your business, all the way from the back end offices, off, the, the, the back office processing, uh, all the way through to the, 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 the real core competence of the business and think, where can this apply? You have to ask the question, even if you're not going to implement something anytime soon, you have to ask the question because everyone is asking the question. Yeah. I mean, I just bear on what you've just said, I... I've got a theory, you know, knock me down, that we're all inherently lazy and therefore we become dependent, if not addicted, to things that, um, you know, do our work or make us, make us feel better, whatever. Fortune magazine um, I did an article a few days ago uh, in which they said that in some sectors, as much as 60% of the staff said they would take a 10% pay cut rather than have their AI taken away from them. You know, how bad is that? Even though generative AI is only about 
you know, five years old uh, at most. There's an old joke, which is a middle manager uh, creates three bullet points to summarize a month's performance and says to chat GPT, give me an executive report based on these three bullet points and it generates the report. Mm. They send it to the senior executive. Senior executive gets the document, says to chat GPT, can you just reduce this back down to three bullet points, please, for me? <laughs> <laughs> that's lovely. Yeah. That is lovely. And, and, and you know, that, that's, that's the kind of thing that is very appealing. You know, if, if someone offered you that chance, wouldn't you? you know, that yeah. saves a huge amount yeah. of time. Yeah. Um, some serious studies suggest that maybe uh, uh, if you look at the typical work in, in, in office work, maybe one day out of five could be replaced with... Um, with generative mm. AI. So what's going to happen then? Are we all going to take that day off for a holiday? Or are we going to be increasingly lazy where the AI is going, hey, it's okay, don't worry, sit back, mm. relax, mm. you know, we'll do it for you. Well, it might not be that simple. <laughs> uh, Tom Davenport. How did I know you'd say that? <laughs> to Tom Davenport, um, your big name in been around you know, for Harvard donkey Business years. Review. Um, yeah, studying how people work, businesses, mm. uh, automation, digitization, uh, and so on. Um, he, 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 he's also a professor, and he talked about setting a task for his students, which is... Yeah, use, use ChatGPT, use it to provide the answers. But I want you to use it properly. I want you to tell me what the prompt was that you're using. I want you to show me the edits that you made in the response that it gave. I want you to fact check it. I want you to check that everything it said is accurate. He said quite an interesting thing. His students came back and said, well, to do this properly, actually, it might have been easier to use Google and Wikipedia to mm, create the answer because mm, mm. to get underneath the response and make sure it was actually accurate, mm. uh, that it wasn't misleading and that you could combine a response that it was giving with the edits and make it flow. It's actually a lot of work. Yeah. So that's a big subject, which maybe we pick up on later episodes. Uh, you mentioned the topic of accuracy. I gave um, one of the AI tools I use. I won't say a bit of arithmetic to do. It was, you know, it's a bit complicated about lifetime financial planning, but it was, you know, I could have done it with a spreadsheet with a bit of time, but you know, why bother? Um, I gave it the question. Uh, it came back. It was wrong. It came back six times. It was wrong each time differently. It didn't check its own homework. So it didn't know it'd given me an incorrect answer. I had to check it and keep asking it on the sixth time. It said to me, I can't do this. Go and have a chat to a, a real person, a financial advisor. Uh, 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 that's a little scary. It's not surprising. Um, at the risk of doing a deep dive into how generative AI actually works, um, the, the, the key thing to bear in mind is that the I in AI stands for intelligence, but it's really not. No. Um, what, what we're seeing is number crunching at massive scale. Yeah. Um, statistics, pattern matching. Yeah. Uh, so the, the idea that you can give an apparently simple problem to AI and it doesn't solve it, mm. it doesn't nail it without mm. a lot of mm. effort manipulation mm. uh, is, is really not surprising yeah. at all once you spend a bit of time with yeah. these technologies. So we're definitely going to pick this issue up because it's, it's real if you're beginning to rely on the, the, the platform, the software to do things for you. Um, I've noticed now on this same tool, there's a line at the bottom that says, I can make mistakes. Consider checking important information. I go, checking, where shall I check it? Oh, I know. I'll, I'll go and check it with Google's AI tool. And it will correct what you've done, but it will tell me to go and check. This doesn't sound too good. So I needed an image creating of... Ukraine and Russia with the border. I asked it to highlight it in red. You can see on the screen uh, what actually came back. And what came back was something that looked like a medieval map of Europe, completely wrong, with some insane country names on it, which bore no resemblance at all to reality. And I thought, how could 
a thing that's cleverer than I am come back with so much rubbish and think it was okay. Mm. So, so to get good results out of um, generative AI, what you discover is after you know five or ten minutes of being impressed, you know, just um, speechless at, at the capability, um, you find you have to put quite a lot of effort in to get sensible results out. And it's an iterative process and you need to add context. There's an emerging discipline of prompt engineering, people whose role is to craft a prompt to get good results out. Um, if, if you're applying generative AI in a business, you quickly discover that there's a process um, interestingly called fine tuning, which sounds quite modest, you know, a little bit of fine tuning around generative AI. It actually means training these models to be more specific to your business right. to improve the accuracy. Okay. And, and you quickly find that uh, that first 20 minutes of excitement turns into a fairly major engineering discipline. Right. If you're going to apply okay. generative AI to anything remotely critical in your business, <clears throat> remotely relevant to actual okay. business. So that, that scares me. What I think you're telling me is that I, 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 the person will have a responsibility if I want, certainly for the next generation, I will have a responsibility if I want to get the best results, which means I've got to, I've got to keep my head switched on I've got to interact, I've got to talk to it, I've got to get comfortable, I've got to, you know, the, it's the sharpening of ideas that lead to a good outcome and a good result, not just blind faith in the technology. Would you, would you agree with that? Yes, and it's absolutely fundamental to making AI successful. Dr. Simon Smith, thank you very much.